The information provided on Dr. Tom Rosell Live by Dr. Tom Rosell DC, interview guests, show co-hosts, or substitute hosts is not intended or implied to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. It is for general information purposes only. Information from this broadcast should not replace the appropriate consultation and examination process by a licensed physician. Always consult your own physician prior to changing any current medical directive or prescription. Dr. Tom Rosell Live, right now on 105.9 FM and AM 630 WMAL. And welcome to Dr. Tom Rosell Live. We are live in studio today to take your questions and talk about what works for you and some natural alternatives. As always, I'm Dr. Safdi Pina, and I'm here filling in for Dr. Rosell as he's out teaching again, um, becoming more common now that he's getting out of the office more. Um, and But I can't do it alone. I'm going to be here with your Wednesday night presenter uh, for this Wednesday, December 6 at 7 p.m. Uh, we'll be just talking just a moment about the topic of headaches and migraines. And the presenter and who's in the studio with me today is Dr. Harlan Browning. Good morning, Stephanie. Always good to be with you. Always good to have you here. I, I know we're going to get lots of questions and everything, and I, I never have to worry with Dr. Browning in here, so... So, but we're going to talk about headaches and migraines in just a little bit. And if you have a question that you want to call in and get answered, give us a call here at Live in Studio. The number is 1-888-630-9625. Again, that number is 1-888-630-9625. And as we go through, we're also going to have uh, something else we can talk about when you're signing up for the lecture over at the office. You can call them about giving back to others during this holiday season. So, Dr. Browning. I know we've done headaches and migraines before, so I know you've got some great new information for everybody that wants to come and attend. And this isn't just if you have a headache and migraine, also if you know anyone who has a headache and migraine. Um, common during the holiday season, this isn't the headaches we're talking about, like fighting off the traffic in the malls and everything, but what basically everyone, I think it's one out of 20 people worldwide gets a attention migraine every single day. Um, Tell me a little bit why we see so many patients coming into the office and why we get so many questions about this particular topic. Well, I think it's it's multifactorial, meaning that there's lots of different things that causes headaches. Um, you, you know, certainly uh, the common ones that we see are tension headaches, migraine, cluster headaches, hormonal, which a lot of times people don't talk about, and allergic reactions. So lots of different causes. Um, there's similar similar mechanisms that go on, but the treatments can often be very diverse to you know to to remedy the issue. And also different combinations of ones as well too. Correct. So, so we know that a lot of people when they come in, they've gotten that diagnosis of you know either have migraine or a cluster headache, and you know they're thinking positional wise where they feel that pain and where it's located, and you know sometimes their options are just medications and stuff. But when you talk about how it's multifactorial, how much is it? do you have to look at the rest of the person's health to figure out what's going on and what's causing their, their headaches? Well, you know, our mantra in the office is, is chemical, structural, and emotional. So very often there's a little bit of each end of that triangle that causes us to have headaches on the structural side. Certainly we can have excessive muscle tension or TMJ problems. Um, on the chemical side, we can be very inflamed because our diet is poor. Um, and on the emotional side, we can be under st excessive stress, so we produce hormones of stress. All of those have uh, ramifications in the body and the endocrine system, and very often the end product is, is a headache, either you know, f infrequent or for some people it could be several times a week and be debilitating. Yes, we know people will come in, and obviously they can kind of describe sometimes what's going on and have a position about... Uh, you know, I'm feeling that sharp stab behind the eye or it's coming from the back of my neck and moving to the head and everything. When, when we were sitting down and talking with patients first about their headaches and migraines, because a lot of times they haven't had a chance to talk to this about their primary doctor, what's the first things that we look for when we're, when we're looking at that structural, biochemical, and mental, emotional? Well, the, the things that I look at are, are the factors that might lead up to the headache. The location of the headache is in the front the part of the, of the head, is in the back, is on the temporal bones on the side of the head. Is there a time component? Does it happen every uh, once a month, does it happen the same time every day? Is there provocative factors? Are there things that trigger it, you know, foods or, or chemicals or, or scents or things like that? Um, what's the intensity? Okay, how intense does it get? And certainly what, what helps it, what alleviates it? When you look at all of those factors, it helps you really refine what the cause of the headache is. So ultimately you can treat the underlying issues so you don't have to repetitively take over-the-counter medications or in, in many cases, 
prescription medications for, for migraines. And I would think those factors, too, also help us determine when a headache is more than just a headache symptom, and there's there's something further that needs to be investigated in as well. Yeah, so, you know, certainly things like hypertension can cause headaches, and a lot of times people don't think about that. Um, so, you know, we have to look at comorbidities, meaning other things that are, the person might have that can contribute to the headaches um, that, that they get. So when we talk about headaches, and which is obviously, like I said, the topic for this Wednesday, September the 6th, and if you're interested, you can call into the office and set up and reserve your spot. When we talk about headaches, the the primary thing when people come in, too, and, and you were talking about timing being interesting, like if you're seeing them in the fall and the spring or when the weather's starting to change it, possibly looking at sinus or allergy issues and, and more sinus headaches, tension headaches, I guess, could run really at any point in time and looking at, you know, how are they handling with stress management as well, too. But what what I think is also interesting is that we see these different sensitivities so that people come in and all of a sudden they're sensitive to light, they're sensitive to sound, they're sensitive to, you know, chemical smells and stuff will start to uh, create some of these issues, too. Why do you think we see more and more of that? And why is that not being treated elsewhere well, I think you're, we're probably, in general, seeing more people suffer from migraines now than, let's say, 20 years ago. Um, all the things you talked about, are, we call them prodromes, which means that it, a person starts to get these different sensations before they actually get the, the headache. And, and for many people, they can just they, they just get a sense that something's going to happen and the headache forms. So, um, you, you know, those certainly can give us indications of the way the body is maintaining itself. So if a person has sensitivity to chemicals, okay, chemical smells, perfumes, uh, cleaning products, that almost always means that the, the liver is overburdened. Uh, one of the things I, I tell my patients to check is if, if you put your thumb on your skin and, and push down and the skin bleaches, okay, and it turns white, it should... Um, become pink again within 10 seconds if it if it takes longer 15 20 30 seconds that's a pretty good sign that you're becoming more toxic as time goes by i think sometimes also using the skin kind of pinch test looking at hydration the fact that hydration can have a lot to do uh with headache and also what we're eating and stuff as well too as far as either triggers or aggravating sure certainly people just don't drink enough water and then then they drink a lot of diuretics coffee teas sodas um and then blood sugar you know, we don't sometimes don't think about that blood sugar handling. Uh, if we don't uh, have meals on a frequent basis and our blood sugar drops, one of the things that we can experience is, is certainly a headache. So that is our topic for this week and uh, headaches and migraines. And if you are interested in hearing Dr. Browning talk about this, we're going to have you give the Rizal Center for Healing a call to set up your spot and reserve it for this Wednesday night at 7 p.m. That number at the office is 703-698-7117. Uh, again, 703-698-7117. And in just a little bit, we're going to tell you what else you can do to help out others at the same time when you're calling in. You can also uh, register online as well, too, and one of the girls at the office will give you a call back to confirm your reservation, uh, usually sometime on Monday morning, so that you can make sure you can get the spot to listen to Dr. Browning. Uh, we've got a caller on the phone. Joan, thanks for holding. How can we help you? Thanks for taking my call. Uh, my 88-year-old sister, who is out in St. Louis, is going to have an ultrasound um, on Tuesday for um, an ovary that's behind her bladder. Now, um, I, she said she can feel a lump like around where your appendix would be. And, um, of course, I'm very worried about her, but I'm wondering, can they do, um, I would think they biopsy, but can they do that, uh, a needle biopsy, or would that have to be removed by surgery? And kind of what the next steps might be. You know, Joan, I think the, the, the thing that you want to think about first is get the ultrasound done, and possibly they might recommend following up with an MRI. Um, you, th this night might not be a situation where a biopsy is even needed. So, I, you know, I would first, you know, see what you're dealing with before you start even thinking about having biopsies. Oh, I'm 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 leaping to conclusions. She had a, a CAT scan, and that's where this uh, why the ultrasound was uh, uh, ordered. And I'm just concerned too that you know at 88. Well, but your your answer still stands. Yeah, I, again, let you know once you get more information, then it becomes easier to to figure out what you need to do moving forward. Yeah, usually if they're 
ordering additional testing on that too after they've done something like CAT scan there. They're still trying to rule out what it is and look at different possibilities as well too. So, and then they'll come up with that next positive stuff. So hopefully she does well. And uh, thank you, Joan, for calling in. And one of the interesting things is we, I have a good question for for you is imaging wise, like since it's such a, with headaches and migraines, you're maybe not necessarily seeing blood flow movement or constriction to the brain and, and to the head as well too. But is there things that you can see imaging wise that helps rule out different types of headaches or migraines? Yeah. So first and foremost, very, very rarely is a headache caused from a tumor. And that's the first thing that people usually ask me. Maybe I have a tumor. Well, it's, it's not very common. Um, Certainly, MRIs will be done when a person has progressive uh, headache patterns. Most of the time, there's there's nothing there to explain it. So, um, if you want to do additional type testing, um, I think thermography might be something um, that's worth a look at. That tells us how active the 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 blood flow is to the area of the head. Um, there's different ways to look at activity of the muscles in the face itself, um, and certainly the TMJ muscles. Uh, and I I would always look at the cervical spine as being a cause of, of the headache. The nerves that come out of the neck go to the head. So if we get compression or traction of those nerves, um, certainly that can trigger it as well. But for the most part, conventional imaging for most people with headaches doesn't exactly tell us why it's happening. So again, we're going back and trying to find really the cause of this is really what the issue is, and then the headache becomes more of a symptom of it, like the red flag of what's going exactly. on. Exactly. It's a, it's a very gray area as far as what's causing it. So you, you need to put all your clinical skills together. You need to look at, again, the chemical structure and emotional side of it, and then um, you know start with the most uh, conservative therapy and then go from there. There's just so many people who are put on uh, medications for migraines. And most of the time, those medications, for, for those who don't know it, are anti-seizure medications. So that, that medication is basically telling the brain just to, just to stop. So um, I'm not real comfortable with people being put on seizure meds unless they have seizure problems. So uh, start with the most conservative and then go from there because most of the time it, it will fix it. Yeah, and I had a patient that the exact same thing. That's the first thing she was put on was anti-seizure medication. And I sat there and I said, let's let's try some acupuncture. Let's get a chiropractic adjustment and take a look and see what's going on. Because a lot of her as was actually this, you're, like you talked about earlier, the liver is getting toxic. And so things weren't processing. She wasn't hydrating. So looking at preventing basically that buildup of stuff that's not happening when you're not healthy and trying to clean up the rest of the system so we get rid of this as well, too. Um, one of the things too, as well as we start to see, especially this year with the molds and allergies and pollens and the weather going up and down, we can see that at least that sinus pressure start to prevent or to make a headache basically kind of linger as well as, so you're seeing some of these other outside environmental influences. Yeah, de definitely this time of year, and because we really haven't had a hard freeze here in, in Northern Virginia, the mold uh, is, is becoming a big issue. So a lot of my patients are coming in and I'm um, complaining of this. So it helps when we get that hard freeze early on, cause it knocks out a lot of, of the mold. And then don't forget about in the house, you know, you gotta, you gotta check the ducts. You gotta make sure uh, that they're clean um, and, you know, put, replace the filters. Simple things like that can make a big difference. Yeah, little things since you're you're taking things out for the holidays, might as well clean up everything in the same time as well too, and make sure that also possibly if you've got you know dry heat, the way that that's going to fucking dry you out as well too. We're going to take a quick break, but then we're going to be back with the, the Dr. Tom Rosell live show. And welcome back to the Dr. Tom Rizzo Live Show. We are live in studio here to talk about headaches and migraines today with Dr. Harlan Browning. I'm standing in for Dr. Rizzo as he once again heads out and teaches and tours and inspires. And if you are interested in this topic, headache and migraines, you have a headache or migraine that's been continuing, haven't gotten answers, or looking for more information, especially uh, for those of you who have come to the, the Rizal Center for Healing before for the lectures, this is another great one pre uh, going to be presented by Dr. Browning on Wednesday, December 6th, as we get closer to the holidays. We don't want you having a headache and dealing with all the stress and everything else, so we want to make sure it's a good time to make some changes. So if you want to sign up for us and reserve your spot, call the office, uh, the Rizal Center for Healing, at 703-698-7117. That's 703-698-7117. Or you can also reserve your spot online as well, too, at rozellecare.com, all R O S E. 
L-L-E-C-A-R-E dot com. Uh, there should be a link that says, uh, but with the healthcare classes as well too. And uh, while you're there, one good thing also for the season of giving is those of you who've worked with us for now know about how we work with the charity, uh, the 501c3 Caring for Others. And what we do every single uh, Christmas time is we actually have a Caring for Others kind of Christmas gala, which helps out giving a um, little Christmas joy to some of the local shelters um, that kids and families are a part to in the local area. And we have six days left. It's going to be after the radio show next next Sunday when Dr. Rizal is back. And we basically try to give him a little Christmas cheer. One of our patients uh, knows Santa Claus. So Santa Claus shows up at the shelters and they throw a little party. But we need your help. We need still about 100 Target gift cards left. Um, and each of those Target gift cards, what we try to do is, is give them to the kids so that they can go and get what they need as necessary. Uh, each gift card is uh, roughly $25 or $50, so that goes to each child. And if you feel like you want to be able to help us this year um, with our CFO event, you can also call the office as well to the 703-698-7117 and actually place your, um, you can give them and they can take a, a credit card number over the phone. That way, if you do it that way, the whole amount goes towards the gift cards for the children in this particular event, which is next Sunday. And uh, the good thing with that is then they will get your information. And it is a, since it's a 501c3, you can get a tax deduction for it. So we need roughly 100 more gift cards. If you're feeling like you're in the giving mood and love to give towards a good cause, give the office a call and talk to one of the girls up front. And they can get all the information you need to not only get yourself a tax reduction and also give back to CFO, which we do through our lectures, we do through Ageless Health, we do through a lot of different things. So you hear about caring for others often, but this is the time of year that we need your help as well too. Dr. Browning, headaches and migraines. We talked a little bit about structurally what's kind of going on. What do we usually see that might make it different between a more metabolic syndrome when someone's coming in and it may be more hormonal based or blood sugar based or dehydration compared to when they come in and they say, uh, everything's bad, been bad since this accident or injury. Well, usually when a person has a headache that's associated with some sort of structural issue, uh, there, there's certain things, positions and certain uh, activities that will will bring it on and make it worse and, and certainly will make it better. And there's certainly contributing factors like eye strain, um, TMJ issues, jaw issues, and just poor ergonomics at, at work. So, you know, the first thing I talk to about with people who, who have headache patterns is, you know, what does your workstation look like? Do you have two monitors? Are they at eye level? You know, where's your, your keyboard? Where's your mouse? Because um, this, this can definitely cause headaches, and, you know, I see it quite a bit. And we also see that, too, when not even at work, but when people go home and all of a sudden now they're back on their computers and they're trying to sleep and getting a lack of rest because their computers are back up and we've got the electronics going. And then, you know, what are they eating at night if they're eating late and everything going on as well, too? So all these different triggers that, you know, when you're home and you're there to rest and relax, you're, you're not even really doing it at that time, too. So different figures, facts and figures that we have to look at beyond just uh, where is it and, and what, how long have you been having it. The other thing that I want to ask about, too, is we have a lot of people that come in that maybe headaches are part of another type of cranial or facial pain. Um, we have patients that come in a lot with, like, trigeminal neuralgia, um, that, you know, the pain that's basically along that trigeminal nerve in the face. How often do you see that headache as part of an inflammation pattern of other things that might be going on in the facial area or, in, like you said, the neck, upper shoulders? Well, certainly, you know, when we're, we have too much tension in the upper neck, we have too much tension in, in, in the jaw, it'll, it'll definitely trigger headaches. The one thing that I find interesting, though, about uh, the frequency of headaches is a lot of times if I see a new patient for whatever type of problem and we have a form where you check off different things that you have and let's say a person's coming in actually for let's say back pain almost always they're they're checking it off that they're having headaches too so the frequency of headaches for for people is is astronomical in my opinion and the fact that a lot of folks just don't think it's that big of a deal um, because they can take a couple of Advil for it. So certainly headaches can be a part of multiple uh, conditions. A different red flag, per se, of everything that's going on from inflammation to chemical, mental, emotional, structural. Certainly. 
We're going to be back. We have to take our mid-break. It's going quickly, so make sure if you're missing anything here, you can also go back and listen to the YouTube channel, Dr. Rizal's channel, where all of the past uh, broadcasts can be found as well, too. But we're coming back in just a little bit and talking more about headaches and migraines with Dr. Harlan Browning, your presenter this Wednesday. Dr. Tom Rosell Live continues now on 105.9 FM and AM 630 WMAL. And welcome back to Dr. Tom Rosell Live. We are live in studio taking your questions if you have any and talking about headaches and migraines with Dr. Harlan Browning, who is going to be your presenter this Wednesday night, December the 6th at 7 p.m. at the Rosell Center for Healing located in Fairfax, Virginia. If you haven't been to the building um, since we moved almost almost a year ago, I guess it was in March, uh, there's not a bad seat in the house because we have not only the front screen, but also all the other TVs around you too. So it's a great experience and we, we figured out we can fit about 50 to 60 people in there, um, comfortably. <laughs> and basically, but we still need you to reserve those, those spots as well too. So we know exactly to prepare for you so that we make sure that you can get as much education as possible. Also, if you look on our website, rosellcare.com, you have the upcoming lectures as well, too, from December uh, the 6th lecture. December the 13th, Dr. Scott Lamp is going to be presenting Natural Approaches to High Blood Pressure right before Christmas. Uh, on d- January the 10th, we have Knees and Hips, a Natural Approach, also by Dr. Lamp. And then Dr. Browning is back in, and he'll be talking on the 24th of January on Acute and Low Back Pain. So definitely got a few lectures to look forward to. You can always go to that website to see what's coming up. And as always, and the presenter who is going to be doing that topic is going to be on the show the Sunday before. Um, And by the time we get to the end of the year, we will always have our shows back on Sunday. We won't have to worry about being pushed around by the Redskins anymore. So um, let's talk a little bit more about headaches and migraines. And Dr. Browning brought up a good point about bringing up the... Um, hormonal aspects of it because there are a lot of different hormones that are always involved with functional processes in the body, but headaches can be a sign and symptom of this as well too. Dr. Brown, you want to take it? Yeah, I mean, certainly with with ladies, you're you're always going to consider uh, the role hormones play, specifically estrogen, estradiol. Um, It has a profound effect on mediating or or buffering pain, believe it or not. So uh, when there's a fluctuation in estrogen, most commonly a, a dip in it, then we're going to be more susceptible to pain and, and headaches are certainly one of those things. Uh, another one that what we look at is, is adrenaline. It's not really a hormone per se, but it, it's, it's a chemical messenger and adrenaline is produced in the adrenal glands when we're under stress and it causes constriction, constriction of the blood vessels. So um, as the blood vessels become tighter, then we have less blood flow. And then uh, as that blood vessel relaxes, as it has to, then we rush that blood back in. And that's kind of the typical pattern that you see with migraines. It's a constriction followed by an opening or or vice versa. So hormones are definitely something we want to look at. And luckily, we can actually test those. We can see the the level of estrogen. We can see the levels of testosterone, progesterone. um, And then we can certainly see if the hormone is being converted properly. Sometimes hormones are, are converted into things that um, that are detrimental to the body. So we want to check all those. Well, no, and, and I treat a lot of women's medicine. They're coming in for different issues, and headaches is definitely part of that. And also paying attention, you know, is it worse at the beginning before a period is going to start? Does it get better afterwards or a mid-cycle as well, too? And some of the, you know, birth controls and the medications that are out there, too, have side effects that are related to this. And why is that? Is it's affecting the way that the body is metabolizing hormones? So it's affecting what levels are going on. So we see this not only in adult women, but also in uh, teens as well, too, that where their hormone cycles are still starting to rev up and, and trying to normalize as well. I would also think when you bring up cortisol, too, that that sympathetic system, that fight flight that we're kind of always under and, and the fact that migraines and tension hormones can our tension headaches can be related to that. The treatments then we'd want to do is to kind of help balance out the sympathetic and that rest digest parasympathetic system as well and definitely you want to you want to buffer that cortisol because if this cortisol cortisol is just freely flowing through the body not only is it is it going to affect pain patterns but it affects our blood sugar regulation it it affects the um the integrity of our connective tissue our sleep wake cycle i mean just on and on and on so you know initially what you want to do is 
add things in that will actually physically buffer it. Phosphatidylserine is one of the things I like to use. It it, it protects the brain from from being um, you know beat up by cortisol. Cortisol causes a lot of short term memory loss. That's so we don't want that to happen. So we while we're figuring out where it's coming from, we want to buffer it and then ultimately uh, remove the stressor. And we also know too that like you're saying with the cortisol kind of beating up the brain, you know, headaches that come from different traumas and uh, concussions and stuff too, things that, you know, people are told to watch out for after, you know, accidents and incidents happening. We know that that can have long-term effects, just like the headaches may not be, you know, signs and symptoms of something going on currently, but something that's been going on with their health for a while as well. Also looking at blood sugar, you mentioned, um, with that, do you see high blood sugar being uh, more of a factor or do you see it just as much of a factor when someone has low blood sugar and is skipping meals or um, not eating well or or tending towards more, say, carbohydrates and simple sugars in order to get through their day, um, bringing on headaches as well? You know, I think I see typically more people with um, lower blood sugar. In other words, you know, it drops beyond a, a, a baseline and that causes a headache response. But in some cases, you know, certainly people who have elevated blood sugar can have headaches as well. It's it's definitely something you want to look at. And, you know, you, you want to check the blood. You want to make sure the glucose levels are good. You want to make sure that what's called the A1C, that's a three-month marker of blood sugars as well. Um, and sometimes you might even do a glucose tolerance test where you, you challenge the body and you, you see what happens when you when you give it a sugary substance. And with that type of testing, you're kind of seeing what happens almost in the next two or three hours. Correct. Compared to a baseline yeah. as well, too. You, so it's not something you might it. necessarily see done all the time at your primary care office, but you would in a type of office like ours. Correct. Yes. And like you're saying, with the hormone testing as well, looking at other symptoms that are other things that might be causing it, looking at not only hormones just on that one day, but over a longer period of time, just like we test cortisol four times during the day instead of just that one um, urine or blood tests that you might see at a primary care office if, there, if there's an issue. Yeah, so that's a, a really good point for, for ladies, you know, who are still menstruating, if you really want to get an understanding of the what their hormones are doing, you you have to track them over the course of the cycle or the month or, or whatever how many days it is. So uh, my preference is to is to use saliva based hormone testing, and the, the labs what they do is they'll collect about eleven samples over the, the the course of the the cycle, so you can see exactly the the rhythm of the estrogen and the progesterone. If we just do a blood test, all we're getting is information on that one day. Uh, and it just doesn't make sense to have a person come back and do multiple, multiple blood tests. So um, if it's a cycling female, you want to do multiple samples over the course of the cycle. If it's a male, one day is fine. If it's a postmenopausal woman, one day is, uh, of sample is fine as well. Yeah. So definitely kind of looking at the longer effects of what's going on, especially if something's cyclical and every every cycle something happens and trying to figure out what the right way to balance that is instead of just assuming everybody's got either high estrogen or low progesterone. Right. If there's a time factor, you're always considering uh, hormones. If a person wakes up with uh, migraines or headaches behind the eyes, I start thinking thyroid because thyroid hormone will cause that pattern as well, sometimes gallbladder. So as you know, as an acupuncturist, gallbladder uh, issues will present with pain behind the eyes and and certainly cause uh, facial issues as well. Yeah, and also like when we think about you know the tightness of other muscles that might be happening at the same time as the headaches, our body tenses and tightens with especially tension migraines. You know, major gallbladder point is that point on the top of your shoulders where everybody would like a good back rub and, and release that muscle tension. That's a gallbladder point too. And, and in Chinese medicine, the liver and the gallbladder not only detoxify us mentally and emotionally, but from that physical standpoint as well too. So if we're not dealing with our stress and uh, emotional stressors as long as well as our physical stressors there there's a problem there as well when we talk about um muscles in the other parts of the body too one of the other things that we talk a lot about here too is tmj and, and we worked with quite a few patients between the two of us where they've had different symptoms that have come up and and we've walked worked with dr chung and dr singer about kind of how people hold all that tension and they might start to feel that that headache starting in near their tmj joint um one of the ways, too, do we see that reflecting on muscle, uh, 
tension in other areas in the body, or do we see that just as a, a jaw issue the way we normally think of it? Well, the TMJ has a, a, a very far-reaching effect neurologically on the whole body. So certainly when a person has a, a poor bite, in other words, that the, the teeth don't contact the way they should or the jaw is is juxtaposed too far forward or too far backward, uh, it's going to increase the tension of the muscles of mastication, the muscles we use to chew. And those muscles are on either side of the jaw, and they're also in our on our temples. So big area of, of the face is, uh, is taken up by muscles that help us um, eat and breathe and do all those types of things. Uh, if the jaw is not in good position, it can cause us to have apnea. Okay, so and when we start to uh, reduce oxygen intake, then that can be a, certainly a cause of a, of a headache pattern too. So I will look closely at the TMJ, especially when the person um, feels better after treatment, but a couple, two, three days later, they say, you know, it all starts to come back. That's when I start thinking maybe the, the, the jaw is sabotaging the situation. So you might want to partner with a doctor, or, you know, a dentist that does a specific TMJ, neuromuscular skeletal. Yeah, and we know that lack of sleep not only does it can it affect headaches and migraines, but then also affect basically the way that the body helps and heals and fights off infections as well, too. I know one of the main things that people do get worried where you mentioned, you know, people are thinking, oh, it's a tumor causing my headache, too. They're thinking oh, if I have this really, really bad headache, it's got to be, you know, a stroke happening or meningitis or some of these other diseases and stuff too. As I mentioned earlier, when do we know that a headache is more, is maybe more and have to really look at seeking advanced medical care? Yeah. So if the headache is completely not typical for what you get, if it's debilitating and pain, in other words, it's it's the worst head, headache ever. If we start to lose changes in vision or balance, um, those are the, the 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 warning signs where you need to seek help pretty soon on because in some cases, yes, a person can be having a headache because of a, an aneurysm or a stroke or, you know, the tumor. It's not it's not very likely, but in some situations that can be the case. And I know we've had sometimes that, you know, other people will tell a potential patient like, um, you know, you you just don't seem the way you normally have, and they're not even able to recognize their neurological changes. But there's there's other times where we have to look into that to see if it's something else as well too. Headaches and migraines are the lecture topic for this Wednesday with Dr. Harlan Browning at the Rizal Center for Healing, and we are also open today to take your questions too. Do you have a headache and migraine that you can't quite figure out, or your experience with uh, you know st- treating it with structural, mental, emotional? Feel free to give us a call here, one eight 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 six three zero nine six two five. 1-888-630-9625. And don't forget to call the office to sign up for this lecture and also to help out the kids for the CFO event that's coming up next Sunday night with your uh, monetary contributions uh, that are tax deductible. When we talk about headaches and migraines, one of the things that also we can't leave out too is the fact that if inflammation is coming from the digestive tract, because even though the head and the digestive tract seem like they're very in very different parts of the body, they're definitely connected. Whether we think about having the, the gut has its own immune system, its own neurological system to happen. What's the effect that we have of different dietary substances? Because we know that some of them, like alcohol, um, sulfites, um, obviously food sensitivities or allergies can have triggers that headaches become that symptom. What's some of the things we have to think about if it might be a digestive cause versus a structural one? Well, you know, if if the headache comes on, certainly right after you eat something or you drink something, then I would look real closely at, at uh, the diet. Getting back to what you said about inflammation, a lot of folks just have out of control inflammation and they don't they don't know it. So it might warrant testing for that. We we use the brain span test in the office very often, and that looks at omega three fatty acid levels, which are anti inflammatory. So we, we're going to check that. And we can look at markers of inflammation in the body, something called CRP. It's a generalized marker of how inflamed we are. And then there's other specific ones like homocysteine that tell us our level of inflammation. So if a person has lots of other comorbidities, you know, the, the diabetes or overweight, the cholesterol, then you can be pretty sure that they're inflamed. So you're going to want to check that. One of the interesting things that I know that I've seen people, you know, they've come in and said coffee or even if you look at it, the caffeine substances that you'll see sometimes added into other headache medications can be 
a blessing and a curse, I guess you could say. It could be part of the treatment, but also part of the trigger as well. And can you just explain briefly, how does caffeine kind of play into effect um, with kind of either triggering headaches or helping them? Because I think some people, they try it and it doesn't work for them. And it may not necessarily be the you know the answer that they're looking for, but it's the first one of the first go-tos. Well, getting back to what we, we talked about before as, as far as the blood vessels and the vascular component, the caffeine causes the blood vessels to constrict, and that's why people who have migraines will, will drink coffee or, or soda or those types of things, or take Excedrin because it has caffeine in it as well, because uh, typically what happens is the blood vessel goes from being relatively taut, probably too taut, to then it expands, and that's when we get the headaches, so then people take the the caffeine to cause the blood vessel to con- Tract again. So, ideally, the best thing to do is prevent the, the blood vessel from going through these big swings of contraction and relaxation. So, um, on the flip side, when people try to stop drinking coffee, they get headaches because the, the blood vessels are so used to being contracted. So, in those cases, you, know, you got to wean them off it very slowly, or else they're going to get these rebound headaches that are actually way worse than the headaches that actually got them drinking the coffee in the first place. Yeah, so it's a, something that's not the easiest to ex- explain, but you would also see that as other withdrawal symptoms from other types of substances like medications and sugar and all these other things that we were checking that create generalized inflammation in the body too. We're going to be back in a couple of minutes for the last section. Hopefully you can join us one last time uh, for the second part. If you have a question and need to call in, feel free to call it in now, 1-888-630-9625. And also don't forget to register for Dr. Harlan Browning and Headaches and Migraines this Wednesday night. We'll be back in just a moment. 105.9 FM and AM 630 WMAL. And welcome back to Dr. Tom Rizal Live. We are live here in studio and we are talking about headaches and migraines. And I just want to remind everyone, too, when you come back in next Sunday, we won't be here on next Sunday. We'll be here on Saturday because of the Redskins. And that's going to happen um, also on the weekend of the December 16th, the 23rd, and the 30th, so a couple of times more this month before we go back to our regular scheduled um, Sunday, 12 to noon, or 12, <laughs> 12 to 1. Um, but if you miss the show, you can also go to drthomazell.com and also the YouTube channel as well, too, to listen to any of the recordings and find out who's going to be presenting in the office that week. Dr. Browning, we're going to take one more phone call um, and help to finish up this segment on headaches and migraines. Uh, Linda, are you there? Yes, I'm here. All right. We came and called in just in time. <laughs> Excellent. The question is, because I've learned more about bowel care, have you guys considered the bowel pockets and the nerve points in the colon? And I know they affect headaches, blood pressure, you know, asthma, frozen shoulder, things like that. Um I don't know if many of your clients get resolution with doing uh, cleanses. Yes, certainly when we have an inflamed gut or we have dysbiosis, dysbiosis meaning that the balance of good flora, the good bacteria in the intestine to bad bacteria skews towards the bad side, it can cause a lot of inflammatory issues that might not be GI related. Uh, So we can sensitize the nerves. There's a huge complex of nerves that that innervate the, the gut and the enteric Nervous system is, is part of that. So uh, people who eat toxic foods, people who have a toxic gut and have maybe leaky gut or, or maybe have parasites and they don't know it, can cause a lot of problems, and headaches is definitely one of them. Okay, yeah, I've tried to talk to a couple people, and they think I'm crazy when I say their digestive tract or things like that could be one of the root problems, one of many. Yeah, and, and the it's pretty unique that the gut also produces a lot of serotonin. And serotonin we, we think about a lot because of the brain function, but um, it's produced mainly in, in the gut. So it's we call it the second brain. So if you if you have imbalance in the gut, um, you're probably going to have imbalances throughout the body. Thank you for calling in, Linda. Um, and what's interesting, too, is from a, an acupuncture standpoint, we have not only the gallbladder, the stomach, the small intestine, 
all of those acupuncture meridians go up through the head to the scalp as well, too. So a lot of times, even though we think of it, um, you know, as, as there physical inflammation going on, the energetics of it can also be treated in there as well, too. Yeah. And then uh, you, you always have to consider, um, you know, if the, if the gut is not as healthy as it should be, by default, the liver has to handle it because it filters all that out. So if there's toxic byproducts of the foods or there's chemicals, or if there's toxins being produced by uh, funguses or, or bacteria that the liver has to handle it. So now we're taking an organ that's usually overburdened and putting more burden on it, and it'll, it'll cause problems, and, and migraines and headaches are, are definitely one of them. So headaches being just a red flag of so much more. So make sure you come and join us at the Rizal Center for Healing on Wednesday night to hear Dr. Browning talk about all the things we talked about here and then some, you can call the office 703-698-7117 to reserve your spot. And remember also, this is a special weekend. You can call in for caring for others to help us get uh, throw a pretty darn nice Christmas party for these kids and help give gift certificates. Usually they're going to be 25 or $50, and you can charge it on your credit card by calling the office the same number, 703 703- 698-7117 and we'll be able to take care of that for you and also send you back a tax deduction um, uh, donation letter. Hopefully you'll have uh, good holidays for the rest of the month because I believe Dr. Rizal is in for the rest of the month. I don't think he's taking too much more time off. Um, and otherwise we're going to keep continuing and into 2018 hopefully will be a happy and healthy year. Uh, This is Dr. Stephanie Pina and signing out from here live at WMAL. Thank you. Breast cancer is a major health risk to all women. It can silently grow uninterrupted for years. The Thermography Centers of Fairfax reminds all women to conduct monthly and annual breast exams. Consider a thermography scan from the Thermography Centers as an adjunct to your routine breast exams. Digital infrared thermal imaging is safe and non-invasive. For more information and to schedule an appointment, call 703-520-7591 or visit thermographycenters.com. This is Dr. Tom Rosell, author of Ageless Health, Health is a Do-It-Yourself Program. My book, now also available in audio version, is a step-by-step program of how to take control of your health and wellness without drugs or needless surgery. You have the capacity to change your health and level of well-being. Take control of your health today and order Health is a Do-It-Yourself Program. For more information and to order, please visit agelesshealthbook.com. That's agelesshealthbook.com. This is Dr. Tom Rosell. After 38 years of practice and almost a million patient visits, the Rosell Center for Healing knows what works and knows how you can take control of your health and wellness. My team of doctors practice 21st century integrative medicine. Whether you suffer from chronic pain and fatigue, allergies or headaches, we can help. Take charge of your health before it's too late. Make an appointment today. Call 703-698-7117 or visit online at rosellcare.com. Are you dental phobic? Do you neglect your dental health because of fear and anxiety? A beautiful smile begins with 